When we're talking about doing any cartilage procedure, it's important to prep the lesion perfectly. There are basic tenets that need to be followed. And the first is vertical walls. When we manage our lesions, we first have to identify and scrape away all the damaged cartilage. It's much like an open fracture where you have to expand the defect to get all the diseased cartilage away. So once I've had vertical walls circumferentially, I typically use a ring curette for this. I then evaluate the subchondral bone. If I'm going to do a mesenchymal stem cell uh, stimulating procedure, I like to dissect through the calcified cartilage layer. I will then perform the microfracture with the power pick. The power pick, I typically start around the periphery to ensure that I'm going to have good edge integration, and then I work my way centrally. An interesting component of the power pick is occasionally a small spicule of bone will be left inside the defect. And this can actually act as a tamponade for that specific hole. So what I'll do is I'll carefully evaluate each hole. I then will take an 18 gauge spinal needle and hook it up to a suction. I run that through my portal and suck out each spicula bone. So as I run the lesion with my scope, I ensure that every hole has good channel to the bone marrow. There are many benefits that I've found to the use of biocartilage. Some of them make my patient happy, some of them make my facility happy. The first and foremost is its ease of use. It's readily available on the shelf and has a five-year shelf life. It mixes with a biologic solution. So you have one solution that's biologic mixing with another biologic solution, combining with the patient's own stem cells. The other advantages that I've found to biocartilage over traditional microfracture is its cost, and that's what makes my center happy. I know that if I ask for it and I don't use it, that it can stay on the shelf for five years. I do know that if I ask for it and I do use it, its cost renders this to be very budget conscious for any facility, whether it's a surgery center or a university setting. Unfortunately, I've had some patients who have injured themselves and have had to go back in early to evaluate these defects. I've had patients at two weeks, I've had patients at six weeks. And what struck me most is that this super clot, the clot that we are trying to maximize with microfracture, has stayed put, it hasn't gone anywhere. I've had knees with multiple lesions, and each of those lesions still at two weeks and at six weeks had the superclot in place. So I know that this scaffold is functioning and it's keeping the stem cells where they need to be in a biologic milieu. Biocartilage is a powder, and when I explain this to a patient, it looks like onion powder. We can't put a, a dry substance into a joint because it won't stay there. So it needs to be reconstituted with something. There are different choices. We can try saline or we can do something biologic. It has been studied over the years that ACP or PRP has a very favorable biologic milieu for cartilage growth. Not only is it antibiotic, mesenchymal stem cell attracting, but it can also be used to augment and liquefy the biocartilage to make it more usable. As we are looking at the ideal solution to reconstitute the biocartilage, we've looked at PRP slash ACP and bone marrow aspirate. Currently, I'm involved in a registry where we're using the ACP. So right now, all my patients are getting ACP. I like the idea of the bone marrow aspirate, but I think that is yet to be defined. There are other key components to the success of biocartilage and the transition of how the technique has evolved since it came out. In the accessory kit, we're starting to see a fat pad retractor. What this will do is allow us to retract the fat pad out of the way and assist in doing an arthroscopic delivery. Also in the kit will be cannulated swabs. This will allow us to dry the lesion and dry the surrounding soft tissues so that the biocartilage can effectively dry and set within the knee arthroscopically. The delivery tubes have allowed us to allow different angles and different approaches so that we can deliver the biocartilage arthroscopically.